New on the night beat, Bear County deputies are still searching for the suspect who shot and killed 27-year-old Serena K. Bain, a young woman who family members say loved her family and loved finding ways to help others. Deputies were called out to the southeast side for what they say was a domestic dispute that led to the shooting, killing Bain and critically injuring two other men. Her stepmom tells me that she wants nothing more than justice for her stepdaughter. It was just so exciting with her, you know. There was never a dull moment ever with her. Paris Muschietti is talking about her stepdaughter, Serena K. Bain, a 27-year-old who was studying online to become a substance abuse counselor. When she wasn't studying, she loved being outdoors with her family. She's going fishing, um, riding on motorcycles, uh, four-wheelers, dirt bikes, anything that was fun and exciting, she loved it. Sadly, last Tuesday night... She goes, okay, why well, I love you. ...would be the last time Muschietti would hear her stepdaughter's voice over the phone. Fifteen minutes later, we got a call from, I guess, some people that were there, and uh, they said, you know, she's been shot. She's been shot. And Bobby was like, well, you know, what, what do you mean? What do you mean she's been shot? Bear County Sheriff's deputies say during a domestic dispute, Bain and two other men were shot near Loop 1604 and Roddy Road. Bain was the only one who passed away. How could you take the life from somebody with no, with no remorse? I mean... You caused so much pain to everybody that was in her life. Sheriff Javier Salazar said witnesses placed this man, Fernando Rojas, at the scene of the crime. However, they do not have enough evidence to classify him as a suspect. But he is a person of interest they're looking for. Muschietti says whoever the suspect may be out there, she wants justice for Bain. The right thing to do would be to just turn yourself in, you know? The family is planning a celebration of life party in honor of Bain as soon as she's cremated. As for Rojas, who is only a person of interest right now, deputies say he's also wanted on two drug warrants. If you have any information, you're urged to call the sheriff's office at 210-335-6000. Rojas is believed to be armed and dangerous. New on the night beat, more than a year without justice. The family of a gas station clerk who was robbed and murdered say they're still looking for answers. The night team's John Paul Baraja spoke with the clerk's sister, who's still trying to come to terms with her loss. These are the last moments of Polly Ann Smotherman's life. Working the night shift at an Easy Martin Garden Ridge off of FM 3009, when a masked man came in with a gun and bag demanding all the money and lottery tickets. There was no reason. He had already gotten everything. He was on the way out the door and had her turn around and shot her. So there was just absolutely no reason for it right here in the back of her head. Harriet Rahman wants to know why. Why the man decided to kill her sister, why her sister said yes to coming into work on her day off, and why this man still hasn't been caught for a murder he committed in July of last year. I went in there for the first time the other day just to like stand where she was on the video and to get her perspective of when the guy came in and see how she felt. And then it was kind of eerie and kind of surreal. Ramon says Pollyanna, better known as Pam, brought so much charisma and laughter to every family gathering, often dressing the part. This year without her at birthdays and Christmas cracking jokes has been a constant reminder that Pam's killer is still walking free, something their sick mother hopes will change sooner rather than later. She's not doing well within her own health, and she had mentioned the other day that she just wants to at least be there long enough to see this man be put to jail. Ramon says police do have a person of interest but still have no suspect. So if you have any information, you are asked to call Garden Ridge Police. If your uh, information leads to an arrest, it could get you up to a $5,000 reward. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. John Paul, thank you. Also new tonight, we're learning the 25-year-old woman killed in a fiery wrong-way crash this weekend was a registered nurse with Methodist. Daniela Lute was a graduate at Texas A&M Corpus Christi Nursing School. She was an RN for three years and was recently promoted. Lute was also working on her master's when the fatal crash happened. Her mother tells me Lute loved animals and she loved helping those in need. Sadly, Lute was one of the two women who died after a suspected drunken drunk driver crashed into their Nissan on I-35. That suspected drunken driver is facing two counts of intoxication manslaughter. Other stories we're following today. Shot in the front yard of a house on the west side. San Antonio police say a man is dead tonight and the person allegedly responsible is his ex-girlfriend's dad. The night team's Jonathan Cotto breaks down what happened. 
There was heavy police presence at this west side home after reports of a shooting around 4.30 this morning. A neighbor who lives right next door to the crime scene says he doesn't know what happened, but he came outside after hearing a woman scream. So I came outside and I saw somebody on the ground and I thought they were drunk or passed out or maybe they hit their head on the concrete. And so I went over there and my neighbor was on the phone with the police department. Now this is the vehicle police say belonged to the victim's ex-girlfriend. He arrived on scene early this morning and began to vandalize her car moments before running onto the front yard. And it was when he got onto the front yard, police say the owner of the home came outside with a gun to confront him. Fired one shot as the victim rushed towards him. Police say the homeowner told him to leave his property. Ramirez says as his neighbor was on the phone with police, he began to perform CPR. I don't even know who he was. I, like I said, I thought it was my neighbor. Okay. And when it, well, I just saw it wasn't him, I, I didn't know. I just did what he told me. He said, do compressions. So. EMS arrived shortly after and worked to save his life, but the 29-year-old was pronounced dead at the scene. The investigation is ongoing. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look around Texas, South Padre Island police are looking for a motive behind the murder of three women at a home there. A 23-year-old man has been arrested in connection with the murders, but police have not released his identity. The women were found shot to death this morning after police responded to a family disturbance call. The suspect was not at the scene when police arrived, but he later turned himself in. The victims' identities have also not been released, but we know that they were for all from the Houston area. Meanwhile, in El Paso, U.S. Customs and Border Protection says shots were fired at one of their agents during a routine patrol. It happened Friday. Authorities believe those shots actually came from the Mexican side of the Rio Grande. Border Patrol says no one was hurt and the suspects were seen fleeing in a car. It is believed around 20 rounds were fired towards that agent. The FBI now investigating. Outside with live cam tonight, wrapping up what has been a hot but pretty seasonable August weekend for us. Temperatures made it back into the mid to upper 90s uh, this afternoon, but that's about where we should be this time of year. It is still plenty warm out there at the airport. Temperatures are still in the low 80s, but thankfully we've got a lingering breeze. Wind still out of the southeast between about 10 and 20 miles per hour, and that breeze is really going to help us out over the coming days, including tomorrow. Our high temperatures jump back to near 95 Monday afternoon, but uh, we'll hold on to breezy conditions for several days this week. If you've got kiddos heading back to school this week, we're going to detail this school week forecast for you coming up in just a bit. Turning to the coronavirus and the latest numbers for Bear County. As of Friday, our seven-day average of infections was at 1,346. And in our hospitals, 1,002 people currently fighting COVID, with 273 in the ICU and 158 on a ventilator. Amid the increase in hospitalizations due to COVID-19, BAMC is taking on more trauma patients from across the state. In total, 22 counties will transfer their higher-level care patients to the medical center so they can make room for for COVID patients. BAMC is a level one trauma center, and this is the third time since the pandemic began they've taken on more trauma patients. For those of you still in need of a COVID vaccine, there are some opportunities available for you this week, uh, including tomorrow. Alamo City Barber College is giving the Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson shot from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. The San Antonio Zoo will be giving out second doses of the Pfizer and J&J &J from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Second Baptist Church will be giving away the same shots from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. For more information on the vaccine events that will be available throughout the week, just head to our website at ksat.com. Meanwhile, on the national front, just over half of all eligible Americans are now fully vaccinated, but that is not enough to suppress the surge in new cases. Hospitals in several southern and Gulf states are filling up as the debate over the vaccines and masks continues. Here's ABC's Jana Norman with the details. Hospitalizations continue to surge across the country, fueled mostly by the Delta variant. So why are we here? Like, I can't believe we're doing this again. States with some of the lowest levels of vaccination, Louisiana, Florida, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Alabama, have seen vaccination rates increase, but are still leading the country with the highest case rates per capita. We would not be in the place we are right now with this Delta surge if we'd been more effective in getting everybody to take advantage. 
percentage of these immunizations. Florida, one of the hardest hit states, reporting a new pandemic record Friday. 23,000 new cases, hospital beds in short supply. What we need to do is flatten that curve again because we are getting patients at a higher rate and faster rate. There are more children hospitalized in Florida with COVID-19 than anywhere else in the country. The likelihood of a child getting serious disease compared to an elderly person or someone with an underlying condition is absolutely less. But less doesn't mean zero. These kids are getting sick. We've really got to make sure we protect them. The rise in pediatric cases has many communities grappling with mask policies as children return to the classroom. Several school districts in Atlanta reporting hundreds of cases, one county quarantining students after an outbreak. They said your children are here. They cannot go to the classes because they were exposed to COVID. Florida's governor issued an executive order preventing mask mandates in schools, but some of the state's largest school districts have moved to require face coverings, though parents can opt out. Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. Still to come on the night beat, the delayed Tokyo Games are now wrapped with Team USA faring well on the medal front. We'll dive into the closing ceremony and what lies ahead for the Olympics. Plus, Northern California's Dixie Fire making history as its rages on the latest. Plus, how it's affecting neighboring states.